You've been together for six years now. How have you changed? Maybe maybe we're more comfortable burning each other. Yeah. I feel like we did a lot of stupid things during shows, and then each of us were like, learn on our own, we shouldn't do that anymore. And I also think that we used to be really surprised at how good we would be at No Look Pass improv, like where I go out to do some kind of offer and you guys are right there to support me, whereas mm -hmm. now I'm more surprised if you aren't there. Right. Sure. So do you sometimes know that and just leave Bob hanging out there? Sometimes I'm amazed at what Bob does by himself, <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't know what he's going to do. Sometimes I get caught up in the show, I'm like, I miss being an audience member. Bob, do something funny. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what, because I, like, derail the show for five straight minutes? Bob's the first person I've seen who has been tagged out multiple times but comes back every <laughs> single time. I once cut to where Bob doesn't exist anymore, and Bob cut back to him. <laughs> I gave you a second. <laughs> Yeah. Are these your favorite guys to perform with, uh, or are there other people you enjoy performing with more? What about this? Mantan is your wife, right? And you love your wife. Your wife's the best. Mm -hmm. But in improv, you're allowed to have sex with other girls occasionally. Right. And that's what it's like. It's like, your wife is your favorite, Yeah. but it's okay once in a while to have something new. And you're like, oh, I wasn't even as good as my wife. Sometimes it's fun to play with new people, also. What about... Improv, like Mantown, is your best bud, yeah. and you're allowed to have other buds, mm -hmm. so you're not cheating on anybody. Okay. And your buds understand that you want to hang out with other buds, but you still have the best bud. Right, right. Yeah, so no one gets hurt. Yeah. Mm, wait, what if we're like a prison gang, uh -huh. and you have to like shave all your body hair to join? It's all. <laughs> sure. I think they all work. How do you train for a Mantown event? <laughs> <laughs> we don't. And I think that was uh, detrimental to our first two years because uh, we would always come out of the gate like a race car and sometimes we would just put it in the wall minute five and then have 20 minutes of burning out in front of an audience. <laughs> uh, and then like we said, we'd come backstage and be like, what was that? Wow, we, we did something weird. Uh, so there was a couple of accidents where we were like, let's never do that again. Um, but that was like year one and two. and then. We pulled it out, but we we yeah uh, we don't rehearse. I think that's what everything else is. This was our vacation from the Herald, uh, scripted work at places like Second City. This was where you just came and said the things you weren't allowed to say anywhere else, and then we just kept going there. And I think now we got to a point where our focus is on every other aspect of the show for the show, where it is that vacation moment. But every other thing we're planning with the games. And that's our biggest regret sometimes after a show is like, what were those games? We just asked people to chug. <laughs> we, we filled a, what did we fill? A Vuzu Vela? What are they called? It was a giant, like, oh, Al, Alporn or something. Yeah, and we just filled it with beer and made people <laughs> chug it until they couldn't chug anymore. <laughs> and then they got off stage and we were like, what did we do that for? We don't know. You've performed with Kevin Sorbo, Colin Mockery, and Greg Proops. How exciting was it for them to perform with you? I think it, it's different for the different guests. Uh -huh. I think Sorbo had a wicked time. Sorbo, Sorbo never improvised before. No, but, well, he improvised like an hour before. Yeah. But then that was his first like day of, of comedic improv performance. And he was great. He was fearless, man. And great. I think as soon as he felt that it was all okay, like he didn't know what to expect, as soon as he was like, oh, like we're all in this together, then he went nuts. And yeah. he was great. Mm -hmm. The fact yeah. that he edited scenes. <laughs> yeah. Like, we thought, you know, you're just going to carry a guest through, but he's like editing scenes, he's cutting us out of the scenes, telling us we're boring. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, he's, he's got to keep this guy entertained. You remember that time when uh, he had never swept a scene before? So his idea of sweeping was walking across the station doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, that's some edits in Toronto. <laughs> it's great. It's perfect. <laughs> Oh man, uh, my favorite thing was that uh, he, he didn't really like being hugged by a man, and so I hugged him, and he kept calling the car European, and he thought, everyone was like, but you're driving on the right side of the car, <laughs> and he's like, no, I mean European, like this, this man <laughs> hugging me is very European. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like uh, Colin Mark and Greg Proofs were a duo, they played with just me and Adam, um, and again, like Greg Proofs hadn't performed in... 
uh, improv in the last little while. So you got a little nervous. Uh, I think he drank 17 vodkas before he... Ser- yeah. Like, seriously. Before he, he was drinking show. them in triples and, and stuff, so like... When you mean 17, don't mean 17 glasses, probably like seven glasses, but seven full glasses of vodka. Yeah. So uh, the next night he kind of said, I was a little wishy-washy on stage there. And it was like, yeah, a little. But he was still funny, still pro. Mockery was insane. So funny. He's always the best. Yeah, yeah he whooped us. Uh, I'd love it if he would come back and play again. And I told him, I was like, I performed with him luckily a few times, and each time I'm still starstruck by him. I saw him when I was 19 at Casino Rama live at Whose Lines in Any Way, and that was the coolest thing in the world to me. So then doing the show with him where we were like drinking with him was amazing. Yeah. If you were Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who would you be and why? Okay, Jason would be Michelangelo. Yeah, absolutely. I got to I would take Raphael. Yeah, you're Raphael. Because sure. I'm like angry with no reason. Uh, Donatello. I wanted to be Leonardo, but I am Donatello. You are Donatello, oh yeah. Yeah. You definitely. What's Leonardo. the difference between Leonardo and Donatello? Leonardo's the leader, Donatello's the really smart one. Yeah. Who can chug a beer the fastest? Adam. Adam. Okay. Has been able to since day one. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jason. Yeah. The, oh, because like, when I was away, Jason would win? Yeah. yeah. And then we've never been in a situation where it's just me and Bob. Yeah. But we're the worst chuggers. I throw up when I chug, right? So I always chug the beer to like an enjoyable, like here, mm-hmm. and then Adam's won, so it's great. It's like, I don't have to really try. If you watch, if you watch the line, like after the lights come back up, you'll see I'll have an empty beer and I'll usually burp or something, and then everyone else will have like beers up to there, they're respectable. But then you realize that it's all over their clothes and they're just soaking wet. Mm-hmm. So they didn't chug it at all. They just I very rarely wear my beer as much as Jaros. It's does. like they forgot to swallow and they filled it up. Jaros is always in a wet T-shirt contest with himself. <laughs> Guys, I never told you this before, but I was so intent on winning that what I used to do is take the beer and just hold it above my mouth and pour it into my face. That, I did that once. <laughs> That's the and, throw up day. And even doing that, you still won. <laughs> and my beer was still full. So I don't know how you do it. Because you're not, you're not using gravity, you're, you're inhaling it somehow. You're sucking I, the beer out of the I, When I was in a frat, I was on the boat racing team and we would battle other frats. And so that's where I learned it. So, this Humber Comedy College wasn't a waste of time after all. Yeah, no, I learned how to go to a U of T frat and live there. <laughs> Three of you are Second City alumni. Do you ever hold that over Bob's head? Oh, we did so much. We used to do it all the time, but Bob just got hired. Yeah. Yeah. Bob's going in a boat. Yeah. I'm excited about that. But we would we would tell so many like cool stories. It was like a clubhouse, mm-hmm. and just like the pride that you'd feel, like you're not a real improviser until you yeah. like been hired by Second City. How uh, when you have three Second City people together and one non Second City person, it's like the weak link of the chain. Mm-hmm. I'd always walk in and they'd be doing a secret handshake and they'd stop and be like, "Can you please leave? We're halfway through this." Yeah, it's like a fourteen minute handshake. Yeah, it was awkward though because we'd be going to those secret Second City parties where like all the celebrities go and you get your free Canadian television show and we ditch Boston how like yeah. nerdy celebrities though. Yeah, like you, you guys are like excited that mm. the cast of Big Bang Theory is there. Uh, yeah, yeah. They we told you Big Bang Theory was there, but who was really there was was John Kameshi <laughs> and the rest of Martin Fugus and and John <laughs> We didn't want to make you feel bad about it, but they're really cool people there. They sang The King of Spain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but now that and Bob... After that song, did they sing any others that you can name? <laughs> no. Yeah, I didn't think so. 